When I ask someone what the least talked about Sonic games are, I mostly get the expected examples, like Sonic 4, Sonic Lost World, Sonic Spinball. That's not to say they're obscure or anything. I've recently seen people trying to claim that something like Lost World is some forgotten Sonic game, like what the fuck, everyone and their grandmother knows about Sonic Lost World. I mean the games that when you mention to someone their reaction is something like, oh yeah, I mean that's alright I guess. And despite coming out on Sonic's home platform, the Mega Drive, there's a Sonic game on there that I rarely see discussed. With, of course, that game being Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. I should make a video about this someday. It's a really interesting title. But yeah, I also mean there's like Sonic 3D Blast or something. And fuck off, I'm not calling it Sonic 3D Flucky's Island. I grew up calling it that, and even I think that's a retarded name. This game was hyped up as being Sonic's big comeback after falling out of public relevancy a bit, with the release of Sonic and Knuckles being his last major release. I mean, what did we get between then? Knuckles, Chaotix? <laughs> Miss me with that shit. New Sonic 3D Blast for Sega Saturn, Sega Genesis, and Game Gear. This game really wanted to boast the fact that it was a 3D Sonic game. Coming out in 1996, it was competing with games like Mario 64 and Crash Bandicoot, which this game doesn't even come close to being on that kind of quality. I'm sure you all know at this point that Sega were planning on releasing Sonic Extreme for their new Sega Saturn, but of course that eventually got cancelled for a multitude of reasons. I really want to make a video about that game's extensive history someday. Fun fact, one of the lead designers for Sonic Extreme, Chris Sen, eventually got to work on a Sonic game that did manage to see the light of day, being the lead level implementer on Sonic Boom, R Rise of Lyric. You poor, poor man. You just can't catch a break with Sonic, can you? But because of its sudden cancellation, Sega had to port over Sonic 3D Blast to the Sega Saturn, with some enhancements to make sure it seemed worthy of being on a next generation console at full price, such as more effects, fully 3D halfpipe special stages. These are honestly really cool, and a brand new OST that utilizes the greater sound capabilities of the Sega Saturn. Sadly though, not even that could help the game. And despite Sega considering it a commercial success with it selling around 700,000 copies on the Mega Drive, it received generally mixed reviews. Some people liked it, some people hated it. Which side am I on? I personally think the game is good, but it's okay. While I think the idea of a Sonic game where you run around with an aim to collect flickies could work, it was executed really poorly, with this awkward to control Sonic over top a weird isometric view that made it impossible to platform. For what it is, I think the first couple levels are fun, but even as a kid, the second I hit Rusty Ruin, I was done. It just feels like you're doing the same thing over and over and over again with a different backdrop. It's too bad because a lot of my issues are minor nitpicks, that if fixed could end up enhancing the experience, if even by a little bit. But it's not like today where you can find an issue in the game and harass the developers over Twitter until they patch in a fix. Or can you? Something neat that has happened in the past few years are people in the television and video game industry starting up YouTube channels where they share behind the scenes info about the stuff they worked on, and that's where the Game Hut channel comes in. Don't let the generic as fuck gamer name confuse you as this channel is created and run by John Burton, who was the director of Traveler's Tales for 29 years, leading such projects as Crash Bandicoot, The Wrath of Cortex, some Lego games, even Sonic R. He's been amazing at making these comprehensive videos going over small hurdles they had to jump over during development, and different concepts that never saw the light of day, like showing off early prototypes to Sonic R. It really gives you more appreciation for some other stuff. Like watching his video on the Wrath of Cortex pitch changes my views on it from a piece of shit handled by incompetent developers to a piece of shit handled by some talented folks who didn't get to make the game they originally envisioned. But you know what game they also took the helm of? That's right, Sonic 3D Blast. He's shown off a lot from that game, like how they were able to fit the intro animation onto the cartridge, the hidden level select. But probably his most ambitious project was going into the original code of Sonic 3D Blast and trying to make his own director's cut to improve on some of the big issues people have with it. He provided constant updates on his channel about his development, and eventually it was released on the 23rd of December 2017. Thank you for this Christmas gift, Mr. Burton. But did he make enough changes for this to be considered the best way to play Sonic 3D Blast? Well, let's go over some of the major changes first. This was released for free in the Steam Workshop, something really cool Sega have done with the Steam ports of their games. They updated it so your games are stored in this 90s kid's bedroom. Dude has all these rad posters and look, there are even some old Archie Sonic comics. That's fucking cool Sega, hope you do more shit like this in the future. But anyway, probably the best thing they updated was having the ability to install mods directly onto the games, through what people have uploaded to the Steam Workshop for free. Finally, I have a convenient way to store all 5 billion ports of Sonic 1 that just replace them with another character. This really simplified the way to share Sonic mods. 
Now even normies may get the chance to experience them. Now that you don't have to go into the game directory, throw in a WinRAR file, extract? Extract where? And who knows what else? Just another example of Sega being a cool company. Yeah, still though, get your shit together. So John released the director's cut on there for free, so we've got an easy way to access it. Right off the bat you'll notice he's added a couple more options to the title screen, giving us the option to either select a new game, or use the added load game feature through the use of a password system. You can also switch up the control style, check out the sound test, which has been given a couple more effects left out of the original. You even have the option to play the original version of the game, for if for whatever reason you downloaded this mod with the intent of not actually playing it. The thing that caught my eye with this was the level editor. Debug mode was always fun to mess around with in the classics, so I'm glad he- what the fuck? I'm, is is this good? Bad? I don't know what any of this means. I'm pretty sure John has a video on his channel that goes over how to use this level editor, but fuck that shit. We gotta check out what's been changed to the actual game. One of the major additions to the director's cut is the added level select screen. After finishing a level, you'll get sent back here where you can choose to go back to any level you want. View your password, completion status. You can even play a time attack after completing a zone, where you're given a short time limit to beat the stage as fast as you can without needing to get any flickies. They even let you see whether or not you've collected all the Sonic heads in a level, which there are like 10 of. You can also see which zones you have and haven't collected a Chaos Emerald for. See, in the original game, Chaos Emeralds were collected through finding Teals or Knuckles hidden within any stage, giving them 50 rings, where then you'll get transported to a special stage, where you'll need to collect enough rings to be rewarded with a Chaos Emerald. By the way, was anyone else really confused by these as a kid? In the Saturn version, you get a run around on the classic halfpipe, with this badass music playing in the background. How about the original? Bridge. Eh, at least the music is still good. So anyway, the original game's special stages were easily exploitable. See, Teals and Knuckles didn't share special stages, they each had their own set of seven. And since you could find both in a stage, it was possible for you to get four Chaos Emeralds with Teals and three with Knuckles. Meaning you never actually had to get to the harder special stages, five, six, and seven. But with this new version, you can only get one Chaos Emerald per zone, to make sure you always see the rest of the stages. Some might not like this limitation, but I am all for it. I've sort of ruined Sonic 3 and Knuckles for myself by always feeling forced to get the Chaos Emeralds as soon as possible, as to not miss my chance. So my time spent in Angel Island is tediously going around to each special stage ring, to get them as soon as possible, making the beginning of the game a complete drag, since you keep starting and stopping to get all the emeralds. But now they're more spaced out, which I feel helps the pace more. In terms of gameplay difference, there are actually quite a few quality of life updates. Sonic's controls have been tweaked slightly, his top speed has been increased, and it's now easier to make turns without having to slip slide all over the place. I didn't immediately notice the differences, and it doesn't mean he controls perfectly, but I'm sure if I were to play the two back to back I'd notice the improvements straight away. One of the best improvements made is the camera. Instead of constantly being locked on Sonic in the center, he's done a good job of giving you more room to see upcoming obstacles, so you aren't constantly running into everything. And hey, even if you do, there's the addition of not taking damage from enemies, if you're moving at a fast enough speed. Something about the speed in Sonic's shoes making him impervious to damage or whatever, I don't give a fuck. But either way, I like it. There have been a lot of additions like that that make it harder to get hit. For example, when you stand still and have the flicky surrounding you, they now act as a shield for oncoming lasers. Of course, this also fixes the issue in the original, where you could be running around for ages, get to the end of the stage, and only then realize about five minutes ago a laser clipped your flicky, and now he's off and is lonesome somewhere. But even if you do lose your flicky, instead of having to tirelessly search for the exact place you lost him, then having to consider that they can move around while not attached to you if each of them having different attributes, like the blue one trying to find you, the pink ones flying around in big circles, the red ones hopping between two points making them a bitch to catch, and the green Flicky's actively trying to avoid Sonic. Now the Flicky icons in the bottom right corner will hop up and down depending on how many you have on you, and there's even a target placed on them that shows you what direction they're in, so you can more easily find them. From all these changes, all you'd think he did was make the game easier, but that's not the case. These issues weren't challenging in the original, they were just annoying and fucking bullshit decisions. Even one of Burton's main goals for this project was, and I quote, making the gameplay less frustrating, and by gosh he did it. Other than that, I could also mention the minor tweaks, that make things just a little more bearable. Such as adding in a timer so you can see what kind of time bonus you're gonna get, and believe you me, you're gonna need it. Cause for some godforsaken reason, John made it so you need a total point score of 5 million to get the true 100% bonus of a score run mode. Hey, who wants to play Drink the Beer? Right here. 
<laughs> you win. All right, what do I win? Another beer. Oh, I'm going for the high score. On top of that, he's made it so some shadows are way more harsh when over top more detailed backgrounds, so you can more accurately see where you're going. He's fixed some general bugs, like how you used to always clip through the few platforms the game did have you jump on, although that doesn't make this angle any less bullshit, and they've also been slowed down a tad when moving. Of course though, the main attraction of this director's cut was the inclusion of the famous Sonic character that was shockingly left out of this adventure. Prototype Crab Peace is finally restored as fan favourite character Prototype Crab is back in the original game at Rusty Ruin, where he belongs. Oh yeah, he also added Super Sonic, which is neat I suppose. For real though, this is a great inclusion, and there's even an added benefit to unlocking him. Not only is he invincible and faster than normal Sonic, but he can also break through walls you could normally only break through with a spin dash, and best of all, he has a permanent homing attack. I know John had to go through a lot of hopes to get this guy working, so I'd like everyone to give him a nice round of applause. <coughs> I said clap, you know, this reflects onto me and makes me look bad, I would- Well, that's just about all the improvements John created with this patch. Which is really impressive, considering it was just a small passion project he spent a couple months on. There is one slight issue I have, though. If we list all the pros and cons, the pros would be the added level select, bug fixes, supersonic, and who could forget prototype crab. But if I were to have one major con with this director's cut, it's still Sonic 3D Blast. Sure, all these updates are nice, but at the end of the day, the game was just flawed from its core. The flicky collecting is boring and the isometric view makes it a bitch to control. I wish I could say the game is now amazing and should go down as one of the greats, but as it is, I can only really say that it's the best way to play Sonic 3D Blast. It's gotta be worth something. It'd be great if someday he could find a way to make an enhanced patch for Sonic R that fixed up its controls, added some beta elements like the flame shield, or maybe even extra characters. But even if that never happens, as it is, John is a serious chad. Dude could have easily been a fucking scumbag and charged money for this, or put it behind a Patreon wall like some other shitheads have done. But he's just a cool guy and probably has a giant cock. Thanks for watching.